video is on adjacency matrix. Any graph can be represented by a matrix. A matrix is very effective and convenient way of representing a graph in a computers for processing. So in this session, we discuss how to describe a graph using adjacency matrix. And the first thing here is representation of undirected graph. In my next video, I'm going to post the representation of directed graph. See here, the graph is seen. How many vertices are there? V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6. Total, they are six vertices. So we have to represent this undirected graph through matrix. So they are six vertices and six vertices here, rows and columns. See, first I am going with V1. So V1 has an edge with V2. So I am putting one here. And V1 is having edge with V6. So I am putting one here. And next V1 is having an edge with V5. Here is one. So they are three edges for V1. So this is the matrix representation. I have to keep one for each edge. So this is V2, V5 and V6. And the remaining are all zeros. Next one. If I go with V2, so V2 has three edges. So one is with V1. So V1. So if I uh, see with V2, I have an edge with V1. And next with V3. So V3, 1. And next again with V6, 1. So remaining are all zeros. And next coming to V3, V3 has three edges with V2, V6 and V4. So with V2, I have to make an edge. Next V6, 1. And next V4, here is V4, 1. And the remaining are all zeros. And next coming to V4, V4 has three edges with V3, V6, V5. So with V3, one edge, V6, one edge and V5, this is one edge. And remaining are all zeros. And next coming to V5, V5 has three edges, one, two and three. So V1, so I have to keep one with V1. And next V6, here is V6. And next V4, so here is V4. So remaining are all zeros, clear? And next coming to V6. So V6 has edges with V1. Next V2. Next this is V3. This is V4, V5. And this one is 0. So this is the representation of an undirected graph. So, adjacency matrix. So, this is nothing but the adjacency matrix. And ne the next figure is, so, this is the graph. And in this graph, how many vertices are there? First of all, this is V1, V2, V3 and V4. And see, now we have to make an adjacency matrix here. So, I am keeping V1, V2, V3, V4 and V1, V2, V3 as rows and columns. See, first I am going with V1. So, V1 has... Two edges with V2 and one edge with V3. So, if I go with V2, so V2 has two edges. So, this is one and this is two. And the next one with V3, it has one edge. And the remaining are all zeros. And next coming to V2, so V2 has two edges with V1. With V1, it has two edges. And next with V3, it has one edge. And next V4, it has one edge. So, this is the representation. And the next one here is, if I go with V3. So, V3 has one edge with V1, one edge with V2. That's it. Only two edges are there. And next one, coming to V4. V4, it has no edge with V1. It has edge with V2. Next one, it has edge with V4 itself. That's it. So, this is the matrix representation. Adjacency matrix for which graph? This is undirected graph. There is no direction for this graph. And therefore, this is how we have to represent. And see, so in the computer memory can be stored as a two-dimensional arrays. That is zeros and ones. So, here it is the adjacency matrix for undirected graph. 
and in my next video i am going to post the representation of a directed graph please look at that and it will be very very helpful for your examination if you really like you know what to do please subscribe and pass it on to your friends